Namaskar, dear friends. Today we are going to discuss the topic space physiology. This is Himanshu Shekhar Gogoi, and you are watching Namaskar Physiology. The informations regarding the topic space physiology are gathered from the following books. They are Textbook of Medical Physiology by Gaitan and Hall, A Textbook of Biophysics by Dr. R. N. Roy. Ganong's Review of Medical Physiology as well as Internet. Also, the photographs as well as the pictures used here belong to their respective owners. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. This famous line was said by Neil Armstrong. Since time immemorial, mankind has been fascinated by space and what lies beyond. To know space, one must understand space physiology. Space physiology is the study of mechanical, physical and biochemical functions of living organisms in space. It establishes the countermeasures to overcome the physiological effects of space. Space age started with the launch of Sputnik 1 in 1957. On November 3, 1957, Sputnik 2 was launched, carrying the first living creature into orbit, a dog named Laika. But she died after a few days. Russians were cautious in sending humans to space and Americans went forward with Apollo projects. This experience with animals paved the way for human expeditions. Now about the space capsules. Different capsules were used for space research. The one you are seeing here is a mercury capsule and it could carry one astronaut. This is a Gemini capsule and could carry two astronauts. This is an Apollo capsule and could carry three astronauts. The size of the capsule was a hindrance for space research as there was less space for accommodating machines to measure the physiological changes. The Legacy of Space Physiology On April 12, 1961, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin became the first human to orbit the Earth in Vostok 1. After several attempts, on 16th April 1969, man was sent to moon. Neil Armstrong, Edwin e. Aldrin and Michael Collins started their voyage. Neil Armstrong first walked on the moon on July 20, 1969. Cosmonaut Rakesh Sharma was the first Indian to go to space as part of a joint effort between ISRO and Soviet Union. Also, there have been many women in space. In June 16, 1963, Valentina Vladimirnova Tereskova became the world's first female cosmonaut. There were disasters in space expeditions also. For example, the one such as Space Shuttle Columbia disaster, which occurred on 1st of February 2003. Many countries are progressing in their space expeditions, and India is also not lagging behind. Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO was formed in 15th August 1969 and its headquarters are located in Bangalore in Karnataka which is a state in India. Aryabhata was the first Indian satellite. India has also launched like Chandrayaan, discovered water on the moon, launched Mangalyaan and many more. Now the, about the topic proper that is the accelerated forces on the body. At the beginning of the flight, simple linear acceleration occurs. At the end, deceleration occurs and every time the vehicle turns, centrifugal acceleration acts. And mind that these forces are very, very important. G. Force acting on the body as a result of acceleration is commonly expressed in G units. 1 G being the force of gravity on the Earth's surface. Effects of centrifugal acceleratory force on the body. 
it can be positive g negative g or transverse g positive g when the body moves upwards the force due to acceleration acting in the long axis of the body from head to foot direction is commonly expressed as positive g 1g being the force of gravity on earth's surface now negative g when the body moves downwards from height towards earth the dislocatory forces acting in the opposite direction that is from foot to head direction that is negative g and thus it is the force due to acceleration acting in opposite direction the effects of the positive as well as the negative g are experienced during take off and landing of space rockets landing of airplanes during parachute jumping and also in elevators now about the transverse g the dislocatory force along the anterior posterior or ventral dorsal axis across the body is called as transverse g here i must mention the importance of g forces the importance of g forces arises from the fact that the hazards in modern aircraft which are encountered by the astronaut for g forces are to be prevented to maintain his or her efficiency so these are the importance of g forces now the production of artificial g force that is human centrifuge with the help of human centrifuge high g training is done by aviators and astronauts who are subjected to high levels of g and thus it tests the reactions and tolerance of pilots and astronauts to acceleration above those experienced in the earth's gravity now the effects of the acceleratory forces the effects of positive g the main effect of positive g forces is on the cardiovascular system of the body the sequence of events due to gradual increase in the g forces are up to 3g increased pressure on the seat between 3g to 4g difficulty in the use of muscles tissues of the face are dragged downwards at 5g movement of the body is difficult and respiration is stopped between 5g to 9g the legs become congested calf muscles cramp sharpness of hearing is decreased vision fails or blackout in almost 5 seconds and unconsciousness follows almost immediately thereafter at higher g even fracture of vertebra can occur before i start negative g i must mention some compensatory mechanisms all these symptoms of positive g vanish quickly when g forces are removed even some physiological adjustments occur during short duration of high acceleration now about negative g what are the effects of negative g in negative g forces that is from foot to head the movement of large volume of blood towards the head takes place now up to negative 3g the aviator feels a gritty sensation and pressure in the eye socket headaches may occur due to congestion and intense rise of pressure in cranial vessels above negative 3g the retinal vessels are engorged and vision is lost because of obstruction of the light path to the retina by excess blood the light passing through the blood gives a sensation of redness thus the phenomena is termed as red out at high negative g the cerebral vessels are not ruptured in spite of the rise in cerebral arterial pressure because it is prevented by the simultaneous rises in the intracranial cerebral venous and csf pressures which act as cushioning buffer on the outside of the brain at very high negative g such as negative 20 g retinal or cerebral hemorrhage may occur sometimes the heart may be st also stopped for 5 to 10 seconds animals exposed to negative 20 g to negative 40 g acceleratory forces have developed subarachnoid hemorrhage here i must mention that the characteristics of the negative g effects and they are 
the negative g forces are much more lasting than those of positive g they are less acute they are slower the effects are less tolerable than the effects of positive g their symptoms may continue for even some hours they cause more permanent damage than the effects of positive g transverse g the transverse accelerator forces act along the anterior posterior axis of the body that is lying down in the aircraft transverse g is better tolerated than positive and negative g because the various effects on the cardiovascular system like the motion of blood blood pressure etc are very much lower if the transverse accelerator forces are exerted uniformly on the body 15 g to 25 g of positive g can be withstood for many seconds without any serious effects other than occasional collapse of a lung which is not lethal protection of the body against centrifugal accelerator forces well here we must mention about the anti gravity g suits anti gravity g suits are specialized suits used by the astronauts to nullify the effects of gravity these are double walled pressure suits containing water or compressed air and regulated in such a way that they compress the abdomen and leg with a force proportional to the positive g this decreases the venous pooling and helps to maintain venous return now the launch position in the space shuttle human beings can tolerate 11g acting in a back to chest direction for about 3 minutes and 17g acting in a chest to back direction for about 4 minutes so the astronauts are positioned to take the g forces of rocket flight in a chest to back direction now space environment and what is the difference with our normal environment there basically two main major differences there are presence of microgravity and absence of atmosphere so microgravity in microgravity there is weightlessness effortless movement of the body as well as failure of gravity to cause hydrostatic pressure in absence of atmosphere there is lack of radiation shielding lack of pressure and lack of air to breathe now what are the stresses of space flight microgravity which causes shift of body fluid to head stress of high acceleration rate lack of space in cramped quarters as well as exposure to high radiation effect of space on body space also has different effects on the body and i will discuss them like one by one as much as possible first of all space adaptation syndrome space adaptation syndrome or space sickness comprises of nausea vomiting vertigo headache lethargy and overall malaise that occurs in astronauts when they are first exposed to microgravity and often worse off after a few days of space flight it can recur with reentry as the force of gravity increases again these changes are believed to be due to mismatches in neural input created by changes in the input from some parts of the vestibular apparatus and other gravity sensors with corresponding changes in other spatial orientation inputs about the fluid shift now on earth gravity pulls the blood causing it to pull in legs in microgravity the blood shifts from legs to chest and head causing the legs to shrink in size this is called fluid shift in this picture you can see in the first one on the earth the blood tends to pull in the lower body that is the first figure this one promptly upon entering weightlessness this one fluid shift towards the head as you can see the fluid is shifting towards the head after a time the body adapts to weightlessness the kidneys reduce the volume of fluid relieving pressure in the head and chest 
The body reacts immediately upon re-entering Earth's gravity. Fluids are started to shift the, towards the feet. As you can see from the head towards the feet, the fluids get to, get to go due to the effect of gravity. Effect on cardiovascular system. The fluid shift causes the heart to enlarge at first to handle the increased blood flow. It also takes less energy to move around the spacecraft, so the heart will eventually shrink in size. Prolonged exposure to microgravity may lead to heart rhythm disturbances. Thus it may cause translocation of body fluids. It also affects cardiac output, blood volume, red cell mass, heart rate, blood pressure and even the myocardium. Space flight osteopenia Major effect of long-term weightlessness is loss of bone. Astronauts lose an average of more than 1% bone mass per month spent in space. Elevated blood calcium levels from the lost bone result in dangerous calcification of soft tissues and potential kidney stone formation. Also during space flight, bone resorption exceeds bone formation and disuse osteoporosis develops. Effect of space on muscles Without the effects of gravity, skeletal muscle is no longer required to maintain posture. Also, muscular effort is much reduced when objects to be moved are weightless, ultimately resulting in disuse atrophy. Importance of exercise One should exercise frequently, which is the best way to minimize loss of muscles and bone in space. A program of regular exercises against resistance such as pushing against a wall, stretching a heavy rubber band, exercising with treadmill, ramming machine and even bicycling helps on. These exercises appears to decrease the loss of muscles. However, the compensation is incomplete. But anyways, these exercises prevents the muscles from deteriorating and places stress on bones to produce a sensation similar to weight. Effect on female reproductive system For female astronauts, gravity assists in the menstruation process by pulling the uterine blood out during her menstrual period. But in microgravity, this pull is not there. And in long space flights, this can cause problems like clotting, toxic shock syndrome and bleeding into and away from the uterus. Space flight anemia. Since there is a decrease in plasma volume and since the hematocrit does not change, the number of RBC must decrease. This reduction of RBCs ultimately lead to space flight anemia. There are many theories which explains this. First of all, hemoconcentration. In space, the body detects an overabundance of fluids in the upper parts of the body. The astronauts find that they are not thirsty and they want to drink less water at the same time. Their kidneys are stimulated to remove this excess fluid, part of which is plasma. The removal of plasma causes the blood to become thicker because as fluid is eliminated, the percentage of RBCs per volume of blood increases. This may cause an overabundance of oxygen carrying ability. When the kidney detects this overabundance of oxygen, the kidney reduces the production of erythropoietin, which in turn suppresses RBC formation. There is also an another theory that suggests that space flight anemia is due to the loss of muscle mass. Because muscles are used less in microgravity, the muscles lose mass and requires less oxygen. With a lower oxygen requirement, the blood can reduce its oxygen carrying capacity. This theory suggests that the body responds to this lower oxygen requirement by reducing the number of RBCs produced. Also, the loss of calcium could disrupt the bone architecture which would result in the loss of bone strength. This alteration of bone metabolism may also affect the bone marrow and hence affect normal RBC production in the marrow ultimately resulting in space flight anemia. 
psychological effects. The enormous stress on the crew coupled with the body adopting to other environmental changes may result in an anxiety, insomnia and depression. And hence the astronauts may be succumbed to some psychological effects. Increased susceptibility to infection. Viral shedding is a huge problem in space. Humans have many viruses in their bodies that are kept at bay by our immune system. Space flight is very stressful and latent viruses such as varicella zoster virus, Epstein-Barr virus are very often activated. This can make astronauts susceptible to viral infections. Space radiation. Prolonged space radiation exposure can have wide range effects on the body. Radiation ionizes molecules in the body and can cause damage to DNA. Among the potential risks are detrimental effects to the central nervous system, tissues of the heart, eyes and digestive tract. Now artificial climate in the sealed spacecraft. Artificial climate is very important in order to survive. One has to be shielded from radiation. There should be enough oxygen to breathe in and many more things. Thus, because there is no atmosphere in outer space, an artificial atmosphere and climate must be provided. Most importantly, the oxygen concentration must remain high enough and the carbon dioxide concentration low enough to prevent suffocation. In the space shuttle, gases about equal to those in normal air are used with four times as much nitrogen as oxygen and a total pressure of 760 millimeter mercury. The presence of nitrogen in the mixture greatly diminishes the likelihood of fire and explosion. It also protects against the development of local patches of lung atelectasis. About the recycling. Recycling techniques have been proposed for the use of same oxygen over and over again. Some recycling processes depend on purely physical procedures such as distillation and electrolysis of water to release oxygen. One such system is like advanced water recycling system such as ECLSS water recycling system etc. that reclaims wastewater from the space shuttle's fuel cells from urine, oral hygiene and hand washing and by condensing humidity from the air. Others depend on biological methods such as use of algae with their large store of chlorophyll to generate foodstuffs and at the same time release oxygen from carbon dioxide by photosynthesis. A completely practical system for recycling is yet to be achieved. Space Food In the early days of the United States space program, astronauts had to be content with freeze-dried powders and small cubes of food, as well as gel-like liquids packaged in aluminum tubes. The first ever cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin's food was stored in toothpaste-like tubes and he had to squeeze them to have his food. Space food has specific requirements of providing balanced nutrition for individuals working in space. While being easy and safe to store, prepared and consumed in the machinery filled low gravity environments of manned spacecraft. Lack of gravity does not affect swallowing due to presence of peristalsis in esophagus. There is decreased taste and smell sensation for which spicy foods for astronauts are favorite. Now on returning to earth, the heart, the heart is smaller and weaker. The vestibular or balance system has become used to a new set of signals, body fluids are diminished, muscles have atrophied, as well as the bones have weakened. Adaptation in Earth Most space adaptations appear to be reversible, but rebuilding process is not necessarily an easy one. Most muscle mass comes back within a month or two. Usually it takes a day of recovery on Earth for each day one spends in space. Fluid redistribution. Upon returning to Earth, 
gravity pulls fluid back down to the legs and away from the head causing one to feel faint when he or she stands up that is called as orthostatic intolerance one will also begin to drink more and the fluids levels will return to normal in a few days bone recovery bone recovery is very problematic for a 3 to 6 months space flight it may require 2 to 3 years to regain lost bone astronauts really have to exercise a lot both in space and after returning to earth space research the national aeronautics and space administration or nasa as well as isro and many other space agencies has embarked on space research one such mention i must mention that lower body negative pressure device well this device relies on suction to provide negative pressure over the lower body the lower body negative pressure helps with cardiovascular functions by increasing blood pressure to the legs contributions of space research there has been many such as foam cushioning special foam used for cushioning astronauts during lift off is used in mattresses to prevent ulcers and relieve pressure talking wheelchairs paralyzed individuals who have difficulty speaking may use a talking feature on their wheelchairs which was developed by nasa to create synthesized speed for aircraft muscle stimulator device this device is used for half an hour per day to prevent muscle atrophy in paralyzed individuals it provides electrical stimulation to muscles which is equal to jogging 3 miles per week orthopedic evaluation tools equipment to evaluate posture gait and balance disturbances was developed at nasa along with a radiation free way to measure bone flexibility using vibration weightlessness therapy the weightlessness of space can allow some individuals with limited mobility on earth even those who are normally confined to wheelchairs the freedom to move about with ease physicist stephen hawking took advantage of this therapy in nasa's vomit comet aircraft in 2007 this idea also led to the development of the anti gravity treadmill from nasa technology space colonization the primary argument that calls for space colonization as a first order priority is as insurance of the survival of human civilization stephen hawking has argued for space colonization as a means of saving humanity they would involve technologies such as closed loop life support system that is yet to be developed in any meaningful way Potential sites for space colonization include the moon, Mars, asteroids, and free-floating space habitats. Summary. Thus, the space physiology is very important because space explorations are important. So we have discussed the g-forces, the effects that the microgravity can cause to the human body, and how to render out these effects, and many more. And these are indeed is very important to understand physiology, especially space physiology. And I must say that it is very important because who knows in the near futures, we may need to go to space because to find us a new home. And Star Wars is also one of my favorite movies. My mental boundaries expanded when I viewed the earth against a black and uninviting vacuum, yet my country's rich traditions had conditioned me to look beyond man-made boundaries and prejudices. One does not have to undertake a space flight to come by this feeling. These lines were said by Rakesh Sharma. Thank you. This is Himanshu Shekhar Gogoi. Thanks and Namaskar. And if you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel. Namaskar Physiology Namaskar Namaskar
Thank you.